the dark underground and the shining heights of the Duomo. There's always been an intense underground life in the city of Orvieto, which has played an important role in the everyday lives of its people and the economy over the centuries. The cliffs upon which the town lies are mainly made of tufa and porcelana, and the particular nature and geology of this rock has enabled the people to excavate thousands of caves crossing and overlapping each other during the last 3,000 years. The Etruscans were the first to dig wells, channels and tanks in their search for water, setting up an advanced system of underground hydraulic architecture. Water systems continued to be developed during the Middle Ages, public aqueduct dates back to the 13th century. Some remains are visible in the archaeological area under the Palazzo del Popolo and from the car park Campo della Fiera along the escalator route leading to Piazza Ranieri. Wells and other public and private tanks were also available. Tanks and wells were dotted around the town during the Renaissance. The most significant examples of visitors are St. Patrick's Well and the even more ancient Pozzo della Cava, but there are other monumental tanks in some of the squares and cloisters too. St. Patrick's Well was commissioned by Pope Clement VII in 1527 and built by Antonio de San Gallo. It was designed to provide water in case of disaster or siege and was completed in 1537 during the papacy of Pope Paul III. The cylindrical hole is enormous, at 54 metres deep, and with a diameter of 13 metres. St. Gallo's design was unique. He equipped the well with a pair of wide spiral staircases, lit by 72 internal windows, forming a double helix, so that mule-drawn carts could descend on one ramp and come back the other without colliding. The light is particularly evocative on the various tones of the stone as it comes through the windows. Visiting Orvieto's underground is not complete without exploring the intriguing path of the Pozzo della Cava. Pope Clement VII had this well restored from 1527 to 1530, seven years before St. Patrick's Well. As you go along the tunnels, you'll feel all the eras of Orvieto's history and learn of the feverish activities the people of Orvieto used to do every day in the underground city you'll come across a fulling mill used in the preparation of wool in the Middle Ages, an Etruscan tunnel for channeling water, and an Etruscan tank in Opus Signanum. Two medieval rubbish shafts, a typical medieval cellar, and a kiln used in ceramic workshop in the 14th and 15th centuries, with Marlika fragments and 16th century lusterware that continue to confirm Orvieto's thriving ceramic industry. Of course, you'll also admire the actual Pozzo della Cava and immediately notice a rectangular section cut vertically along the circular structure. It's a channel dating back to Etruscan times that was probably used as a guideline for excavating the 17th century well. Not far away, still on the Via della Cava, is Orvieto's medieval and Renaissance Maiolica Museum an interesting private collection of ceramic handicrafts on display on the very site where they were created. The exhibition of Marlika pottery is made up of old ceramic parts from two kilns operating from the second half of the 14th century to the second half of the 16th century. This was a real industrial scale factory. We can tell this by the particular arrangement of workspaces and the discovery of repetitive objects among which there's an extraordinary group of 400 identical cups. The large kiln that you can see inside the museum is the only intact 15th century kiln for firing Maiolica pottery that we have left in Italy, and perhaps the world. Its size indicates that the production was extensive. When the kiln was discovered, we learned that Lustre Maiolica pottery was produced in this workshop and therefore, some items that were not previously thought to have been produced locally are now ascribed to Orvieto.
fascinating and interesting guided tour that shouldn't be missed is the Orvieto Underground Visit, where you'll come across the remains of a large and well-preserved olive oil press and some grindstones, one of which was used in 1697, even though its structure could date back to as early as the second half of the 14th century. You'll see a chamber next to the press that could have been used to store the olive residue before the second pressing. And there are a number of surrounding areas and features of the mill. Cellars, a chimney and a water channel. In these spacious caves, you'll notice a mysterious and irregular sequence of chambers connected to each other. This is a large Popsolana quarry. And we can see how excavations were done, that is, in a completely disorganised way, not following a plan, but the seams of the rock. Venture down into another cave that will lead you to amazing examples of Columbari. These rectangular openings are so close to each other that they have fascinated archaeologists for a long time. What could they have been used for? They were revealed to be an extremely rational system of cells used in the Middle Ages to breed pigeons. We can in fact see that tubs of water were provided for them and there are openings located on the other side of the cliff edge so that the birds could be in touch with the outside world. Don't hesitate to begin this extraordinary journey back in time. The route itself is an easy walk and all you need are comfortable shoes. Once you come out into the daylight again, the Duomo will seem even brighter and more dramatic.